Wuhan, China, the place where the COVID-19 virus is believed to have first transmitted to humans. At a wet market, where people and animals in squalid conditions are in constant close contact. So we've all become familiar with the uncomfortable details of this market and it's fueled a narrative that takes aim at Chinese culture. Wuhan or the Chinese coronavirus. The, the Chinese this. coronavirus. How deadly is coronavirus? A foreign virus. Foreign virus? As a quote, foreign virus. But COVID-19 is not the first virus of its kind and it's not likely to be the last. So why are we not asking the uncomfortable questions? Was Wuhan a random outlier, or was it a symptom of a much bigger global issue that the media are not reporting? Hey everybody, this is Klaus, and in the last couple of weeks I've been looking into the history of infectious disease and viral outbreaks, and I've come across some interesting theories about COVID-19. I did a little bit more digging and I found that these conspiracy theories have yet to stand up to scientific scrutiny. But what I did find was even scarier because it turns out that virtually all of these infectious diseases from the past have all come from an animal host. If we take the early 20th century, for example, the Spanish flu is believed to have come from the avian family. Then HIV, which is identified as emanating from humans eating chimpanzees. But something happened from the 1990s that meant that these viral outbreaks, these infectious diseases coming from an animal host, became more common. SARS, swine flu, Ebola, MERS, and now the coronavirus. These are just some examples of outbreaks that originated from animal hosts from all over the world. And to understand how this is happening, how these viral outbreaks from animal hosts are becoming more common, we need to look at how our food system has changed in recent years. Since 1961, the human population has more than doubled. In that same time, global meat production has increased by more than four times. That means that each of us now consume 20 kilograms more meat per year on average than we did 60 years ago. And to keep up with this ever-increasing demand, we've obviously had to change the way we farm animals for meat. In the early 20th century, livestock was typically reared on small-scale, family-run farms. Animals tended to have space to roam outdoors. Production was relatively limited, and meat and dairy were luxuries. Today, our insatiable appetite for chicken breasts or burger steaks has meant that intensive animal farming has become the norm. But what is it about this intensification that makes viral outbreaks more common? It comes down to the fact that when any animal is confined in close proximity with no space to roam and under immense emotional stress, conditions are ripe for disease. A perfect example is the Spanish flu of 1918. Here humans are packed together in trenches, malnourished with the constant stress of combat. Their impaired immunity is likely to have increased the rate of transmission and made the virus highly pathogenic. In the same way, livestock are routinely subjected to cramped, confined and unhygienic conditions. Not only does this increase the probability of transmitting a virus, it also raises the prospect of mutations. Take the influenza virus, which has been responsible for all the major pandemics in the past century. When it is present in its natural reservoir of aquatic birds or bats, the virus is relatively harmless. But if it passes to another species, or from one species to another in quick succession, the virus can mutate rapidly. Each mutation makes the virus more pathogenic, new strains of the virus can develop, and the likelihood increases that one such strain could be transmitted to mammals, including humans. This process is known as antigenic shift. Humans don't have immunity to these new strains of the virus, and certainly not a vaccine, which makes the job of planning for the next pandemic all the more difficult. Big money is currently being poured into the race for a COVID-19 vaccine. Central banks are announcing record stimulus packages to boost the economy. Healthcare systems are under strain. And yet why is there such reluctance to address the root cause 
particularly from a media. When we performed headline analysis, it showed that of the 51,669 media articles published in the last 30 days about COVID-19, only 2.1% mentioned the word animal and only 0.3% mentioned the word farm. To talk about a pandemic without consistently discussing its origins, it's like holding a murder trial and not mentioning the number one suspect caught red-handed. It's irresponsible and misleading. In a recent Telegraph article titled, Coronavirus Could Have Been Prevented, scientists say, the author explains how increased contact with wildlife is responsible for viral pandemics. The focus again being on wildlife with no mention of limiting meat consumption as a potential solution. Not only are media platforms not discussing the issue, some seem to be silencing those that do. Let's look at one situation, for example, where a social media post by Erting Ed discussing the link between eating animals and disease was flagged as partially false by Instagram and then removed. What the media need to do is catch up with what public health experts have been saying for decades. 12 years ago, for example, Dr. Michael Greger, author of Bird Flu, a virus of her own hatching, called industrialized animal farming, a perfect storm environment for infectious diseases. If you actually want to create global pandemics, he explained, then build factory farms. This has been supported by scientists over and over for years, including by World Health Organization representative, Dr. Gaudin Galea, who said, as long as people eat meat, there is going to be some risk of infection. So why are the media underreporting the common origins of all of these viral outbreaks? I think it comes down to this, the economics of industrialized farming and our commitment to tradition when it comes to eating meat and dairy outweigh concerns for human health. As evolutionary biologist Rob Wallace said, it pays to produce a pathogen that could kill a billion people. And that was on the back cover of his book, Big Farms Make Big Flu. What he's basically saying as I understand it is that as human demand for animal products continues to grow, intensification of animal farming is a market-driven response. After each pandemic, the focus from our society is merely to improve farming methods and practice stricter biosecurity. But what about addressing the cause rather than the cure? There's no saying we've seen the worst of it. Sure, COVID-19, the coronavirus has been terrible, very, very contagious, but the fatality rate seems to be less than 10, 15%. This could be much higher in the future. Take the Nipah virus, a highly infectious disease with a death rate of 40% or more when transmitted to humans. It was identified in Malaysia in 1998 in pigs and pig farmers, but was quickly contained. Repeated outbreaks have been reported, but as the Nipah virus is not very contagious, it has not spread further. In the future, it is possible that a viral strain could emerge from a factory farm, which is both highly contagious and deadly. So to prevent pandemics like this in the future, we need to start looking at the root cause and not just the country it came from. People are already doing it because it's glaring, it's obvious. If we fail to take this seriously, COVID-19 could be the precursor to yet another pandemic that could have been prevented.